So my name is Kain Tendajanius and today we are going to continue with module 2 of the full course on Microsoft SQL Server and as I mentioned we are going to be fast so you need to be smart about it because this is both for beginners and for those who have knowledge of programming before now. In module 1 we installed SQL Server and created a database, created a table and wrote a query but in this tutorial we are going to learn about these things. I'm not going to spend time reading them so you can pause the video, read them and know what we are going to do. Again, I used to say subscribe to my channel because I want to have people I interact with and I want to be sure that I'm actually working with, with people who are smart and want to learn. So please click on the subscribe. This motivates me to continue making this lesson. So I'm going to end this presentation and let's go to get started. So this is where we stopped. So from the presentation, I mentioned I'm going to be talking about identity columns. So what what's identity column? An identity column is simply a column that is auto increments. Let's take that simple definition for now. So for instance, if you have, if we go back to our table, we can right click on it and go to design. So this is a table. We want this primary key to be auto increment. So we don't have to insert anything there. We simply need to insert first name, last name and department. And automatically that column is going to increase. So if we have three records and we insert another one, that column is going to assume a value of 4. So to do that, just select the column. And if you scroll down, if you come down here, you go to look for identity specification. And this is identity specification. And say is identity and choose yes. Here you can choose yes. OK, the next thing you want to do, you have yes here and then identity increment can be 1 and also the seed can be 1, meaning that it increases by 1. So if I save this table right now, after now I'm going to test it to show you what, what is happening. So at this point, if I go to right click and say edit, now if I try to add a record, I will not be able to add uh, in the first one. So here I may not be able to add anything. So let's say I want to add Okay, so, all right, so if I press enter on my keyboard, you see that automatically that column assumes uh, a value of three. So that is simple, just cite the identity, identity specification to yes, and also specify the seed to one and the increment to one. If you want it to increase by two, and also set the increment values, that way you have two, four, six, but I don't, I'm not sure you want to do anything like that. So we have talked about identity, the next thing we want to talk about is writing queries. So we are going to write four queries because from here we have we are going to write, we talked about this, let's now write queries. So queries, the interesting thing about queries is query is the same thing in every language. So in SQL Server, in MySQL, in H2, in different databases, if you learn how to write a query, you can learn how to, it means you can write a query in any database. So to write a query, uh, we start by writing a query to do crawl operation. Create means select. Re uh, create means se select. And we have um, uh, create, read, update, and delete. Right? I can't remember. So we have select, in, uh, select, insert, delete, and update. So let's go to do it. So the first thing we want to write a query to uh, select everything from this table. So I'm, I'll simply go to write go to uh, highlight on this database and say new query. So I'm simply going to say select star. Star means, sorry, star means everything. You cannot actually select only the first name and select only the last name. But if you use star, it means select everything. So select star from TBL. So now you have IntelliSense trying to help you or guess the name of the object you want to use. So just use your arrow key to select it and press enter on the keyboard, it's, it's completely. So go, go ahead and click on execute and you can see it runs and gives us all this, right? It gives us everything inside this table. This is about selected main. How about selecting only the first name and the last name? I'm going to say first name. You can say first name, comma, last name. So at this point, I'm selecting only two items. If I execute, you have we have only the first name and the last name. So you can play around with select query, and it's quite fine. 
The next thing I want to do, uh, I want to do a delete, right? Create, uh, select, update. Okay, I think the next one is insert. Sorry. So let's write a query to insert item into this into this table. We've written something like that in the very first class, but let's write again. This time there is a little difference. The reason is because we've used an identity column, and now we don't want to worry about inserting anything into the identity column because it will be auto increment uh, auto incremented by itself. So at this point we're only inserting into insert into the table name for sure. And the columns we want to insert has to be specified. So at this point, we want to insert into first name, last name, and department, and then values. Now the same order you specify in the in the in the in the column specification is the same order you are going to specify in the value specification. So the, the first name, let's say Mila. Mila. Okay, so Henshaw, last name Henshaw, and then department is let's say accounting. Okay, so at this point, this is an insert statement. Now, if I execute it, it says one row affected. If I execute it a second time, it's also going to execute a second time. If I execute as many times I execute it, it's going to continue to insert record into this table. It's going to be inserting the same first name, the same last name, and the same department. But what is going to be changing is the ID, because the ID is an identity. For each insertion that we make, is going to generate a new ID. So if I go ahead to to do a uh, select statement, now the 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 case doesn't matter. It can be uppercase or lowercase. Select start from TBL student, and just highlight what you want to execute. After highlighting what you want to execute, and just click on execute. I can see it insert, inserted this Mila's record uh, several times, as you can see right here. So this is about insert. Let's talk about update. Let's say we want to change the name of me, my name, Kainton. I want to change my name from Kainton to the genius. It's very simple. So we want to change this particular column. Only the first name, I want to change this first name to update it from kind to column to, 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 to the genius. So to do that, write an update statement by saying update. Specify update as a keyword and specify the name of the table you want to update, TBL student, right? So we now want to specify the columns we want to update. So we need to also only specify the new value of this column. So we use set. Set statement is going to be used. Set first name equal to the. So what is going to happen here is that this query is going to overwrite what is there. It's as simple as that. So whatever is there is going to be overwritten. So if I run it right now, let me run it as a queue. It says fine. Six row. Oh, something went wrong. So when I use this query, it updated everything. So, okay, we'll, we'll fix that in a minute. So let me just execute. So you can see it set the genius as a first name everywhere because we did not specify where it's going to do this update. So that is about the where clause. So if I want to now change the first name to, to the genius only for the first record, I can say where uh, the student ID equal to one. So at this point, it's going to only update uh, for the first one. So let me just change it back to what it was, kind of. So at this point, if I execute this, it's going to change the first one uh, only to kind of. You see one row affected, as you can see. And now if I run this, you can see that kind of is there as uh, the first name and the first record right there. Okay, let's now talk about delete. Delete is the simplest one. So simply say delete uh, the record where, okay, let's delete the first record. So simply say delete, uh, delete from, from the table name 
So if you run this query, it's going to delete everything. So you need to specify where ID, where student ID equals one. So it's going to delete only where the ID is equal to one. So if I run it right now, it deleted. So if I go back to select everything, you'll see that there's a queue. So you can see that the first record is gone. The has student ID of one is gone. So I'm going to actually stop here. I like to say play around with all this, try to run different queries and make sure you understand how to write queries. I mentioned I'm going to talk about stored procedures, but since I have 10 minutes interval, I've run out of time. So we are going to now discuss stored procedure because it actually needs you to take some time to understand it. Is a bit is something that you need to take some time to understand. So we are going to continue in the next part. We are going to be talking about stored procedures and we are going to be talking about views as well. So I'm going to re re remind you to subscribe to my channel if you've not subscribed and also feel free to leave me a comment if you have any recommendation about these videos. If you have any challenges, also let me know as well and I'm sure I'm going to help you.